the world on a global scale spends $10 trillion a year on energy production. Scalar light technology will liberate the world. It's clean. It's efficient. You don't need telephone poles or satellites. This is a different dimension of energy. Perhaps we might call this divine intelligence or Christ consciousness. Some might call this the OM. If I'm successful, I can amplify this instrument millionfold. I'll be able to light up the city. Cool. Well, good evening there, Tom Palladino. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Ridiculously Human podcast, buddy. Uh, it's cool. It's uh, it's early morning for me and uh, and late evening for you. So I appreciate you um, coming on late. I know it, I know it's sometimes hard to keep the energy up uh, <laughs> at uh, eight pm. So I really appreciate it. But um, I get a lot of uh, guest bookers sort of sending me potential guests for the podcast, and I, I'll say that probably ninety nine point nine percent of the time I I just don't really even um, accept them because they I don't know they they just don't sort of fit my my conversation or my podcast but your one like really sort of perked my ears and got my interest so i'm really i'm really like excited to to chat to you You know like what you're doing sounds extremely fascinating and you're working on some breakthrough sort of technology which is a, a new sort of branch of physics as you call it scholar light therapy so um yeah it's going to be really really interesting for <laughs> for my listeners to listen to so so thanks so much buddy you're sitting now in this uh, awesome laboratory right and you've got all this fancy equipment behind you uh, i'm just looking at the one piece there which is on my left your right and it actually looks like an old uh speaker system i, I used to have <laughs> which <laughs> which is which is so cool because it was an awesome speaker system i remember it um but i'd love to hear like you know how this sort of manifested because it doesn't just happen overnight it seems like quite a, a lifetime of work you're absolutely right i've been at this for 50 years from theory to practice when i was a youngster i was studying nikola tesla I was enthralled with the work of nikola tesla and the reason one of the main reasons i was so enamored with his work I realized that Tesla later in his life had developed free energy, that he has, had harnessed the sun, the energy of the sun. He was no longer working with electricity. He called it radiant energy. I call it scalar energy. So my pursuit in life is to bring the world free energy of the sun. That will change our social world. Okay, that's amazing. Like, And, and you, you probably like almost lose half the people i guess when when you say that <laughs> but but it's interesting it's interesting because i i know that a lot of this sort of comes for you from the sort of maybe the religious side of things and i was watching this super fascinating documentary that most people will say is like conspiracy theory and it was basically talking about like how in the ancient days that the cathedrals of churches were used as sort of uh electricity conductors to get energy from the sky and then if you looked at the shape of the the cities and stuff um, back then they were all like sort of a, a kind of particular shape and a lot of them had these waterways and things like that where um the water the electricity was effectively sort of um shared you know like throughout the the towns and villages is that like way too conspiratorial or is that like no. al along your sort of lines of thinking that is accurate that is accurate many pyramids obelisks have been shown to collect scalar energy many geometric forms even cathedrals as you mentioned at least are passive if you will batteries of scalar energy the energy of the sun the stars now the ancients knew that but for some reason today this is not mainstream this should be a mainstream topic this should be front and center. My proposal is that the existing power grid is inefficient. It's not working. It's too expensive. Energy production is too expensive and dangerous. We need a better system. Nikola Tesla was developing wireless energy that he could extract from the sun. Why? We should have listened to. Why not? So where did it all change, do you think? Is, is there, do you know the history of it? I would say Tesla was the first one that developed instruments that could control scalar energy. Nikola Tesla he developed two sites in the United States, one in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and another one in Long Island, New York. And both of those installations were able to broadcast wireless scalar energy energy that he was somehow able to manifest from the sun. Sometimes he called them cosmic rays. 
He made clear it was no longer electricity that he was working with. The energy was clean. He could transport over a vast distance. He he contended, and, and I believe his, his his remarks that it was cosmic energy from the universe. So he was not having to rely upon uh, any type of motor for this energy. Now that is very exciting. If you consider the world on a global scale, spends ten trillion dollars a year on energy production, ten trillion U.S. dollars a year on energy production. And that energy industry, production and distribution, is dangerous. It pollutes. It's, it, it requires a great deal of maintenance. If we would have listened to Tesla, we could have reduced our energy costs dramatically. And we would have safe, clean energy without any chemical decomposition, without any type of chemical pollution. What do you think is like stopping us from doing it now? Like... You know, there, there must be some reason. There must be people in the world that know about this. You know, that I mean, obviously you do, but like there must be other people that, that know about this. You would think electricity companies would would, would almost want to do this, or, but probably not because it's a it become it's become a money making machine. It is a money making machine. But behind me is a scalar energy instrument. It's on. It's operating. I just want to quickly demonstrate what I mean by this. If I hold the light bulb in my hand, place it close to the instrument. Wow. The light bulb will illuminate. So there's plenty of energy coming off that instrument. Now, if I can do that locally with the light bulb, eventually I want to be able to do that at distance and illuminate a million light bulbs at, at, a, at a distance, if you will. And I'm getting there. I'm working on certain types of engineering that will allow me to produce that type of energy. So what I have behind me is a working model, free energy for the future. Now, to, to be very clear, there are many people who want this, but there is a power elite that does not want their money stream interrupted by free energy. So if you will, archive this discussion, because in five years, 10 years from now, you'll see free energy on the horizon, and many people will start to realize that this is the future that we need to make that shift from fossil fuels to free energy. Um, I think there's a bit of a, a sort of movement going on in this space, like from some of the videos that I've watched on like Twitter and uh, TikTok and stuff. And there's definitely guys that are dabbling in this sort of um, energies available from, from the air, so to speak. Um, and it's, uh, they, they sort of doing these experiments and stuff. And there's definitely guys like, you know, they're like, okay, cool. We're tinkering with this. There's something there, which is exciting. It is very exciting. Technology will help mankind. That's the point of my work. I am a researcher. The technology that, that I have developed will help mankind the world over. That's what it's all about. That's it. And Many people are starting to realize what this means. Scalar light technology will liberate the world. It's clean. It's efficient. You don't need telephone poles or satellites. There was this amazing book that I read years and years ago called The Hydrogen Economy. And it sounds like it, fairly similar to what you're speaking about now, definitely in terms of, say, like liberation. Um, but it was, it was also like uh, using sort of air and water to uh, extract the, hy the hydrogen molecules and then use that as energy because it was also like a, a more effective energy, uh, more available energy. Um, it was just that, I guess, the sort of maybe the, the, the hardware is, is not necessarily there and, and, and more research is required and that's, that's a sort of big investment program. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. More research is needed. I am developing certain types of instruments that will amplify this energy. If I'm successful, and I can amplify this instrument millionfold, I'll be able to light up a city. You'll know it. The world will know it. It will be a very bright city, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're getting there. It's, it's, a, it's a process I have to understand, but I have to rely upon God's wisdom. But keep in mind, the overarching objective here is to help mankind. Imagine if we could send energy anywhere in the world, illuminate any building, illuminate any home in the world that we wanted to through a scalar light instrument without the need 
of satellites without the need of any type of local management of the energy. We just broadcast it anywhere in the world. Well, that's the future. Today, I'm working with this energy for quantum health. I've developed these scalar energy instruments, and one of their functions is to help people achieve what I call energetic health or quantum health. It's really interesting. Uh, just in, it's, it's almost like a, a decentralized system in some way. Like in, in, if someone, I mean, if everyone could have like this sort of in, in their household, you know what I mean? Like it completely decentralizes everything, which is which is in line with like a lot of the way I think the, the world is going. If you let's say look at crypto and you look at media and stuff, it's like becoming much more decentralized than it, than it has been in the past. And, and that's really sort of exciting. And, and just actually talking about that a little bit, you spoke about liberation and in this book, the hydrogen economy, what they said is like, if you take uh, Africa, for instance, like most of their debt is, um, is money that they pay for, for energy, you know, through like, like getting oil and stuff like that. And, they, they, so, so like, you know, they, they never actually afford anything else because all they're ever doing is paying off the debt of their, of their oil. Now imagine if Africa could, um, you know, sort of like just produce their own energy using Scala or, or just hydrogen, then they don't have that debt and that reliance anymore. And then that, that continent can absolutely flourish. Um, it's very interesting. Yes, it is. And that's the point of my research. I want to see mankind flourish. You're absolutely right. I put a price tag to it. The world, on a global perspective, every year spends $10 trillion on energy production and distribution. Imagine if we put $10 trillion to our health, to our families, to schools, education, to farming. Imagine what we could do with that $10 trillion. Let's face it, $10 trillion, that, that doesn't help us. It, just, it goes up in smoke. Was there like a moment in your life where you realized, okay, cool, I'm going to dedicate my life to this because 50 years is a, is a dedication and it's, it's not something to, it's not, some, it's not an easy decision to make, I don't think. It's not. When I was a teenager 50 years ago, I was reading books. This is before the computer, reading books on Tesla. And what Tesla was able to do was demonstrate free energy. And I looked at his two installations in Colorado Springs and Long Island, New York, neither installation had any satellites or any uh, series of what I would call high tension wires, electrical wires. So it became clear to me that this was wireless energy in which both settings were out in the country. They were not close by the electrical grid. And when Tesla said he could broadcast any, anywhere in the world, I believed him and he was right. Well, I can broadcast this energy anywhere in the world now through a person's photograph. With that understanding, I, I had to go to school. And I spent a good 13, 14 years in college at the university level learning all aspects of science. Then eventually at the age of 34, I left behind my academic career. And I've been researching alone ever since. The reason I research alone is nobody wants to take this up. Nobody wants to spend the time researching this type of what I would call emerging science, this emerging branch of physics. There's very few scalar energy researchers. One of the reasons why it's so laborious, time-consuming, and there's no money. It's groundbreaking research. So you have to have a love of this. And I, I do love it, but I'll be the first to admit it's been a half a century of work and effort without a paycheck. So how does a guy like yourself fund it? Like, what do you, what do, you do to sort of make cash then? <laughs> it's, it's, it's... You used to, to coin the phrase, I barely get by. Um, I have a website, Quantum Healing, and that pays my bills, that, but that's all. There are many projects that I would like to undertake, but they would cost millions of dollars. I just don't have the funding. And this was Tessa's problem that did. Tesla was always penny notes. He was always bankrupt. He was always on the verge of bankruptcy because many of these experiments back in the day were very expensive. They took some type of physical, if you will, plant, some type of physical laboratory. I, if you will, scale down. This is my, one of my small to scale laboratories, but nonetheless, it's, it's very expensive. Uh, just last week, I went through $15,000 on 
a manufactured parts. I had to have a manufacturer create parts for me. So it, it's it's always a, an expense that you're looking at. It's a never ending research journey, and in many ways, it's, it's quite expensive. So the one that you have behind you is like a sort of miniature model, is it? And then you have you have larger ones, do you? Yes, this is a miniature model pointing to a Tesla coil. Now, Tesla in his day was using coils that were 20 feet high, 30 feet high. That's only a foot, half foot high. So I've scaled down 20 to 1, 30 to 1. I have to do that. I, if I tried to build these 20, 30 foot towers, it would cost me $5 million. I've, I've put it on paper. It's, it's not feasible. I don't have $5, $10 million for a plant. So what I learned to do is miniaturize everything, including when I work with people, I don't work in the flesh. I don't work with people. I work with photographs of people. That's a big difference. Today in my laboratory, I was working with photographs. I'm going to show the audience. This is an example. That's a collage of photographs. Just an example. I wasn't working with this collage. But I could actually work with Hundreds of people by way of the photograph, as opposed to hundreds of people coming into a clinic and sitting in front of an energy generating scalar light instrument. So everything has been to scale, everything's been miniaturized, and I've developed a new technique. Instead of working with people, I work with the energy field of a photograph. That truly is like mind blowing. And I'll, I really want to get into that in, in a second. But just before we get into that, like, how did you sort of like start tinkering and finding out about that sort of equipment? Like, you know, was this through your 14 years of, of study? Like, uh, because it's, like you said, it's not really out there. So how do you, I mean, where do you even begin? <laughs> so I was very fortunate. I began with an, an American inventor by the name of Galen Hieronymus. I never met him, but I met his wife. And Galen Hieronymus had developed scalar energy instruments. The instrument behind me is a modified Hieronymus instrument. So he is the uh, scientist that I have to acknowledge who gave me this insight to the actual physical application of this energy, how to create a physical instrument. And I've done that. I have a series of engineers who work with me. And over the years, we perfected this instrument. I'm going to show the audience the instrument. This instrument has no moving parts. Point to a vacuum tube. That vacuum tube actually creates a scalar wave to show the audience to scale and what, what that would look like. That would be a scalar wave that would be created. It's a double helix. It's a spiral of energy that would be created and maintained in the vacuum tube. And then the vacuum tube feeds into the capacitor. The capacitor holds the energy and will pulse the energy. It's a pulsation. It's not sinusoidal. It's a pulse. And that energy is pulsed into the Tesla coils. And once the energy is in that Tesla coil, it's, it creates a local scalar energy environment. I can feel it with my hand. But once again, I can demonstrate that it's alive because it illuminates a light bulb. Now, the key to this instrument, I am in a different dimension. That's right. I'm no longer of scalar energy, which is chi, prana. We go beyond the space-time constraints. This is a different dimension of energy. Perhaps we might call this divine intelligence or Christ consciousness. Some might call this the OM, O-M. So to be clear, there's two realities, there's two dimensions. I work in the scalar energy dimension that has nothing to do with electricity. So what is my point with your audience? There is another dimension. There is another energy spectrum. And it has great prospect. It is actually unlimited in what this energy can do. Electricity, magnetism, have their parameters. There are only so many things you can do with electricity. As opposed to scalar energy, I don't think it, there's any limitation. 
Why? Because this energy pervades the universe and it moves about. It's actually instantaneous communication. And the signal never weakens. So it's instantaneous communication and there's no entropy. The, the signal will never weaken, will never attenuate. It almost sounds like a sort of collective consciousness where we are connected through, yeah, I don't know. Some, some, I've always thought there's like some form of energy that sort of controls the world, you know, and, um, and, and you're kind of describing it there. But when they say that we are electric beings, like humans, are you saying that we're, we're not necessarily electric beings? We are, but we're also these, we also have this other dimension of energy to us? There's two dimensions, and we are electric beings. If this energy, this double helix begins, that's, if you will, the first step in creation. This double helix scalar energy is the initial energy of the sun and the stars. And then this double helix will unbind. It will, if you will, will become distorted. And one helix will become electricity and the other helix will become a magnetism. So we start at a higher order of scalar energy and degrades down to electricity. So we live in both dimensions. There is a scalar energy dimension. There is an electromagnetic dimension. What, what is my point? I'd rather work at the higher order of scalar energy rather than the lower order of electricity and magnetism. Now, I, I know this is, is abstract, but this is what Tessa has observed and what I've observed in other scalar energy researchers. There's two ways of living. There's two dimensions. The biochemical world, our physical world, is really governed by, in many ways, electromagnetic energy. Yes, we are electrical beings, but we're also spiritual beings, scalar energy beings, which is non-physical energy. So I work in the realm of non-physical energy, scalar energy. I don't work in the realm of physical energy, electromagnetic energy. Tom, what difference is it for me to go out into the sun as opposed to using your machine if you're harnessing the energy from the sun? That's a good point. You, it's identical. When you go out in, into the sun, you'll have not only electromagnetic energy, but scalar energy. You'll feel both. Okay. That's great. With my instrument, this is a local scalar energy environment. And the key is this. When I place a person's photograph inside the instrument, I can access that dimension of scalar energy as such. My photograph now is in a scalar energy dimension. I can actually, many times I feel that energy in my frontal cortex, my frontal lobe. Imagine that type of energy going into my photograph. I feel it. Or to use this as an example, place my photograph close to the Tesla coil. That is a chakra balance. I feel that immediately. I feel that energy in my seven chakras, or at least here in my immediate frontal lobe. Now, in so doing, I am now being influenced by scalar energy. And I have found that when you're under the influence of scalar energy, this improves your health, soul, mind, and body. How did you find that out? How did you find that out that it's like had health benefits? When I started working with this family, the Hieronymus family that developed these instruments, the first day I worked with this instrument on myself, I started to dream very deep dreams. My sinus is clear. I construed that I was destroying bacteria, parasites, and fungus. My sinuses cleared up right away. I, my breathing was uh, labored because I was suffering from a cold. Within one hour, I, I had no problem breathing. I was no longer expectorating. My lungs were clear. Apparently, I had eradicated germs, bacteria, parasites, fungi, mold. When I treated myself through my photograph, I was astonished how quickly it worked. I'm still astonished to this day. But the key is this, when you work with light, scalar light, everything is instantaneous. You don't have to wait a day or two. 
the action is instantaneous. If I tell this instrument to eradicate bacteria, it will do so instantly. The mold one is very interesting because mold toxicity is actually, you know, quite quite a big deal that lots of people suffer with and they don't even realize. But Okay, let, let, let's get into that because I was, you know, when I was sort of looking on your website and stuff, you, you, um, you, you have a certain process that you do. So I just want to kind of sort of read it out, right? Um, and, and it's a three-step process. So one is you upload your facial photograph. Um, your photograph is embedded with unique scalar light signatures and is influenced by the scalar light instrument. Your photograph serves as a bilocated scalar light version. Okay, I just wanted to find out one thing, and I know you've just touched on it, but like, uh, why photo only and not in person? I, I know you said you can help people, um, more people like using a photo, uh, but wouldn't in person have more of an impact? No, because when you're working with force fields, you're never working with the biological person. This is what I've discovered with scale energy. All of its action is non-physical. There's not a proton or neutron involved with scalar energy. So it's not of the physical realm. Secondly, whether you're at a distance or you're here in my laboratory under the direct control of the instrument, it doesn't matter. There's no distance with scalar energy. So let me make this clear. In this realm where, where we transcend time and space, time is always in the present moment. And there is no space. There is no separation. When I place my photograph in that instrument or a person's photograph in that instrument, Regardless of where these people live in the world, there's an instantaneous communication to their force field, to their force field, not to their biological field. My work is non-biological. My work is non-chemical. My work is strictly informational. Now, what does that mean? I send information to the force field. And that information, I, I hope, will correct soul, mind, and body. I do not send biological communication to a person. I send informational communication to a person. So what am I getting? If you take a drug, a pill, pharmaceutical product, that's a biological information pill. We never work with pills. I work with information, which is non-physical. If you go to a physician and you have massage or surgery, that's a physical procedure. That's a medical procedure. I never do that. I send information to the person. That corrects problem. Sometimes people do not have to have surgery because I sent the correct information. For instance, I, over the past five months, I've been working with people with cancer. After working with over 100 people with cancer, it's a new process. Most of those people are in remission. No way. Yeah. Most of those people do not have any what we consider outward signs of cancer or tumors. Most of those people feel better. Their appetite is returned. So many of those people now forego chemotherapy, do not, are not candidates for surgery. They feel better. Why? Because I sent the proper information into their quantum field. This double helix of energy is able to find cancer signatures in the informational field and correct cancer. That's right. A scalar energy instrument, this double helix, finds cancer as a marker and corrects the cancer marker. It's all information. We're never working with the physical body. Now, if you have any appreciation for a computer, the way you can program a computer, the way the computer receives instructions results in a program or a physical product or a manifestation. That's what I'm doing. I am programming the information body. It's all non-physical. When we program a computer, it's, it's information. It's non-physical information. When I program a person, I do it with non-physical information. And I do it through their photograph because their photograph is the information field. So to be clear, this is pure information from start to finish. This is an information field, scatter energy, that sends information to the people through their informational field, the photograph. I always keep it at the informational level. I never, if you will, work at the biological level. The biological level has problems. 
the biological level has impediments, setbacks. The biological realm, if you will, that is, if you will, problematic. Working at the informational level, it's sim- I simply tell cancer to cease to exist. And that's what happens. How do you measure like non-informational energy and like these force fields that you speak about? I'll answer that, but I'm going to make a statement. The precursor to that is scalar energy is infinite. It's consciousness, Christ consciousness, chi, prana. It, it's a blanket of the universe. It pervades the universe. There is no basic unit. There's no basic unit for infinity. It's infinite energy. You cannot measure infinity. There's no basic unit for scalar energy. Nobody will ever be able to measure scalar energy. It's infinite. There is no basic unit. You can only judge it by the before and after results. So the results are, how do you measure the results then? Are they purely anecdotal? They're anecdotal. Very good. Because this per se is not medicine. You know, when was the last time you ever sent your photograph to the physician or to your dentist? Never. I'm not being condescending. I want the audience to, I'm trying to elicit a response. The photograph is the information field, not the biological field. This is a new branch of physics, and we work with only information because information ultimately decides our chemical being, our chemical makeup. Say somebody sends you a photograph, okay, and at that point in time, they are like, I don't know, carrying bad energy or not in a good place in their own life. Like they, I don't know, they just might be having a terrible day. So their photograph carries a different energy. Is that. Does that impact the therapy that you provide? Yes, it does, because people can interact with this energy. And that's a good point. I always believe that a thought is a brainwave, is a scalar wave. An emotion are scalar waves. So we can participate in the healing, accelerate the healing, or we can, in some ways, reject the healing. Now, that, that should give a lot of people pause to consider. What did I just say? Thinking is a, is a brainwave, is a scalar wave. Imagine that double helix, that brainwave, every time we think. That's what I'm saying. We are scalar energy beings. That brainwave, that scalar wave, is, is emanating, is being broadcast every time we think. Any type of creative thought, deduction, creativity, any type of inference. Or it's a heart wave. That double helix is our emotion. Anytime we have feelings of love, empathy, understanding, knowledge, that is a scalar wave. There has to be some type of information system. That is the information system if we were to be able to photograph. It's a double helix. Now, quickly, what does that represent to you? Mm -hmm. I believe that double helix, scalar energy, creates our DNA. Interesting. That's why... That's why we have a double helix DNA. What gives rise? What creates DNA? A scalar wave. What maintains scalar? What maintains this as a scalar wave? The scalar wave itself. So, what am I getting at? The energy from the sun and the stars creates and maintains our DNA. We are an information system from the sun and the stars. The information from the sun and the stars creates DNA. That's that's fascinating. I mean, the thing about what you're saying about uh, our thoughts and stuff, they, you know, there's lots of guys out there that that say, you know, you you are your thoughts, and and I kind of can can sort of believe that, you know, like if you keep on telling yourself you're bad at something, you'll you'll probably be bad at something. Um, uh, on the sort of other side of it, you have guys that are, you know, they begin to sort of manifestation and stuff and, you know, like saying what you, what you want and these sort of stuff and manifesting that into your life. And that sounds like some sort of scalar, scalar energy. Is that something you, is a bit too woo woo or is that also? No, now that gives great credence to the thought of manifestation. We hear that term so often or the law of attraction or thinking you can achieve, <laughs> or if you can think it, you can achieve it. Why? You're establishing that scalar wave in your mindset, and it does have its course in action. When you think like that, that's what you're going to create around you. This is why some people, if they want to be happy, they're happy, regardless of the world situation. I realize there's problems in the world. I'm not naive. But if you're going to create a happy scalar energy environment, 
And that's what you're going to be a happy person. Regardless of the decision of the role, why not create a happy atmosphere with yourself and your family and friends? Why not influence family and friends with that happy energy? That's what I do every day. I see the problems around the world. There's not much I can do about them, but I can control what goes on in this laboratory. I, I, I have got a wife and we're, we live a happy lifestyle. I have two dogs and we're happy. So that's what I can control. I uh, had this guy on, on the podcast, a really, really cool guy as well. He, he would probably be super interested in this, but he he, he always says that um, people in a room, they always gravitate to the person of the sort of highest energy. And uh, and it's true, you know, like if you, you're the type of person that walks into a room and like, you know, you have your shoulders back and like, you know, a smile on your face, then people like, oh, hmm, I want to go talk to that person. And it's like, it's literally just through maybe what you saw, but you also felt their presence. And I think that's um, that's kind of what you're talking about as well. You're right. Some people call that a magnetic personality. Some people say that it's, it's the law of attraction. And what are you attracted to? The goodness, the decency of the person. That person, good vibes. That person has good energy. Call it what you will. You're attracted to that. Animals are attracted to people like that. You've seen that. Some animals will, will befriend you in a minute because they feel comfortable. If an animal sees a person of nefarious intent, a lot of animals can pick up on their love spirit and an animal will reject a person because of that. Yeah, I know it's true. They, they seem to have this sort of intuition, don't they? That, that we don't uh, animals, that's for sure. And, and actually I was just thinking now, like I mean, I'm in Thailand at the moment and I, like, I know you've done work on animals and stuff, but just thinking about like the, the sort of intuition of animals, like, I remember when they had the tsunami here, apparently they said that a lot of the, the animals actually sort of ran up to up the hills uh, because they sensed that something was going to happen. And I guess they were picking up something that maybe we don't, we're not in tune with. Absolutely right. I heard that likewise. Many times when there's a tsunami or let's say a hurricane is coming, the animals sense that and they go to higher ground and they go to safety. You're absolutely right. So, and that also happens with earthquakes. The animals can sense this. So it's a shame that the animals have a greater sense of nature and are in correspondence with nature much more so than people. I, I concur with that. It, it, it was once said, I don't know if I can prove this, but when Tesla would turn on his instrument in Long Island, many of the fish or birds in the vicinity of Long Island they were agitated because they thought it was perhaps an earthquake or some type of tsunami that was coming. So the scale of energy was so strong that it, it agitated the birds and the fish in that area. I wonder if like humans have become, at least modern humans have become so disconnected from nature that they are, that they're not in tune with like the, the messages that are sent out to us. I think you're absolutely correct. And, and the more we see this, this rush to the urban centers, the more disconnected we become with nature. I, I make it a point every day to, to walk in nature two, three times a day. I try ground, I try and walk barefoot. I live in Florida, I can do that. It's warm. But it, that all gives pause. Let's go back to nature. I agree with that. Uh, you know, technology is fine, but you still have to live in nature. We're made of nature. We're made of the elements of the earth. We have to go back to nature. For sure. I think a lot of like sort of say modern disease and mental health issues are because people are just so detached from, you know, even sunlight, you know, and uh, and and like you said, walking barefoot and on some grass or something. It's just, you know, it, it's crazy that, that people are not doing that enough because I think that would really help our health. Sure. So, so the second step, right, um, in, in this is, uh, you, you write, scalar light identifies your scalar light photographic force field. Um, scalar light is able to identify your spiritual, mental, and physical scalar light signatures embedded upon your photograph. Subsequently, scalar light provides corrective divine intelligence upon your scalar light photographic force field. Okay, so um, you've said that this uh, works at an energetic level. Um, and, you know, you've also spoken about things like quantum entanglement, clairvoyancy, spiritual realm. Is, is there anything more there that you, that you haven't sort of really spoken about that's worth uh, telling us about? We don't have 10,000 hours to address that, but that's a good point. 
many times people say, what, I'm clairvoyant, or I have deja vu, or, or I can see into the future. Why? It's an information system. Why can you see that? Because you have access to this realm of scalar energy. Deja vu, prophecy, clairvoyance, it means you have that type of a mind. Some people have been able to memorize with ease. Why? Because you have this gift of scalar energy that you can memorize. Some people, Mozart could compose at age five. Why? He had musical instructions. Mozart had musical information at age five that allowed him to compose. That doesn't take anything away from him. It's, it's hours of practice. But I can guarantee you I was not composing at age five. That was not my gift at age five. Imagine if we have these gifts brought to us by scalar instruction, scalar information. Mozart had the gift of music. Some people have the gift of prophecy. Some people have the gift of language. Some people can memorize books. Some people can master five, six, seven languages. Some people are good at math. Some people are great athletes. Why? Because they are abetted. This is the guide that helps. These instructions help us in life. When is that sort of given to you, do you think? Is that given to you like, I don't know, uh, when you're born, before you're born? Number one. There, there have been some people that are, are sovereigns without opening a book. They understand mathematical computation without, without having a paintbrush in their hand. They can paint. They're a nat what they call a natural. They're a natural. Well, why are they a natural? Because naturally, God gave them that information. Why is it that some people can paint? I can't paint. It's not my gift. I'm a theorist. My gift is theory, mysticism. That's my gift. So consider what I'm saying. In the future, if we can control this energy, we can control the mind. If we can download the information that we want, we can download that information into the mind. Our mind will become a scalar energy receiver. Everybody has the, everybody's a genius. We just haven't tapped into the genius of our mind. Every mind, every brain is animated by scalar energy. Once we tap into that, we will realize that everybody's a genius. We haven't tapped into that. And the key to tapping into it is by being, what is the key to tapping into it? Yeah, many people tap into that through prayer, meditation. Many people tap into that because they realize that they have a gift and they work on that throughout their life. Many people um, will see that they're, they excel at a, a specific sport or an athlete or a discipline, science or the arts. Some people excel at, at, at certain feats that, that others are, are just, just clumsy at. So we all have those gifts. Today, I had a handyman in my home. And that handyman knew exactly what to do. That handyman had the gift of being able to troubleshoot a problem in my home and correct that problem. That's a scalar gift. That's, that handyman had that particular gift. We don't realize that all human thought is scalar thought or human emotion is scalar emotion. And once we understand this, we'll, we'll now understand why we think and why we feel. Too often, we're looking at the, the biological world. We're looking at the effect, the effect. We're not looking at the cause. This is the cause. It's, it's really, really fascinating. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm totally like in line with your way of, of thinking. Um, I think that humans are way more i think we're very complex and like and we we're not understood we don't understand ourselves enough at all um you know we we might think we have you know we we're sort of advanced technologically and stuff but actually i think the human body the human mind the human spirit is like on a whole nother level that we still haven't even researched and we still have no idea about and, and that's why like you said like people haven't tapped into their own genius yet. And, and we don't necessarily know how to, we don't even know that we have that. And um, I also believe that each of us has something special in us to, to share with the world. Uh, you, you know, you talk, you've spoken about like chakras and stuff, like how does the, what, the work you doing um, tie into sort of chakras? Does it at all? Does it do any healing along those lines? That's another brilliant question. I'm going to hold up an animation. Those are seven props. Many people think we have seven main chakras. Well, what do you notice? They're a spiral. It's a corkscrew, right? 
They rotate. Why? The scalar wave rotates the chakra. So if this is a scalar wave, but that's what scalar energy looks like, it's going to rotate chakras. Many times when I work with people, they'll tell me, Tom, I feel better. After a month or so, they're no longer depressed. Their, their feelings are, are, if you will, happy feelings. They're not depressed. Some people say that they're emotionally um, high strung. After I work with them a month or two, they're calmer. They're at the middle of the road. They're not what, what I call manic depressive. They're calmer. Some people say that they can give up alcohol or drugs because the scalar wave corrected their chakras, corrected their thinking. There you go. So the information from scalar downloads into our chakras, corrects our thinking, corrects our appetite. Some people no longer have a problem with alcohol or recreational drugs. How is that possible? Through information, through the divine intelligence of scalar energy. That's a nice sort of segue because the the, the, the third sort of step, you say um, you experience the benefits of uh, the scalar light program. Um, scalar light imparts a divine influence upon your scalar light signatures, thereby enhancing your spirit, mind, and body. Many people report a significant improvement in their spiritual, mental, and physical health. I was I was watching uh, some of the testimonials, um, and it's very interesting, like you know, hearing the the people speak about their benefits, and um, you know, people had like one lady, she had sort of recovered from herpes, and um, that that's kind of you know, like that's kind of crazy, um, and and there's there's been other people that have uh, you know helped with uh, I think sort of depression, like you said, and and mental health and these things. Um, what other things uh, that you might not have mentioned? I know you've mentioned cancer already, which is which is pretty phenomenal. Um, okay, a better question is like, how does somebody who's suffering from something like do they have to tell you? Okay, cool. Listen, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm a manic depressant, or um, I uh, suffer from trauma because I was abused, or do they have to tell you what they suffered with? Or do you literally go through certain steps to help them just clear whatever it is they might have? I never diagnose. I never ask them. It's, 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 frankly, it's none of my business, their medical condition or their, their private life. I let the energy dictate all of that. The energy knows what to correct. When I place a person's photograph inside that instrument, the instrument will know if the person has cancer or not, will start correcting that cancer signature. All disease is a signature, is intelligence. Everything has organization, even disease. What do I do with disease? I negate it. I negate the intelligence of disease. I negate cancer as a signature. I negate a tumor. Earlier this summer, somebody told us that they they, uh, had a dog and we worked with their dog. The dog had a tumor. Within two months, the tumor disappeared and new skin appeared. And all that individual had to do was submit a photograph of their dog. Two months. Now, did I instruct that dog for the tumor to shrink? No. The energy can pinpoint a tumor signature and can negate the tumor signature. We're not working at the chemical level where you have hundreds of thousands of chemicals and you have millions of chemical permutations. If you have so many thousands of tens of thousands of chemicals acting and interfacing with one another, the permutations are mind boggling. There's only one permutation when I work with cancer. The instrument will look for, the instrument will send out the intelligence of scatter energy, will look for a tumor signature or cancer signature and turn off or negate the tumor or cancer signature. There's only one obstacle. It's the disease itself. We negate disease. I'm going to repeat that. Scalar energy negates disease signatures. Is it also preventative? Yes. Thank you. Many people tell me, uh, for instance, herpes. Many people say that they no longer have herpes after we work. Many people have a follow-up polymerase chain reaction test. And according to them, they don't have herpes. Here's, Here's one a PCR test from the person. After we work with them, according to them, they no longer have a viral load for herpes. They had a PCR test conducted. 
Now, what does that mean? Sometimes herpes leads to different types of cancers. Sometimes the herpes virus can pass the blood-brain barrier and contribute to a neurological impairment, such as Alzheimer's. Some people say that herpes, if it gets in the eye, can cause blindness. Okay, so what does that mean to mankind? If we can negate the herpes signature, this instrument can work with millions, billions of people. I want to scale this. Keep in mind, I've devised this instrument to work with photographs, miniaturized photographs. Today in my lab, I work with a million photographs. That's right, a million photographs. Now, that would not be tenable. That would be will very difficult for a million people to visit my laboratory in a day. You can't do that. So logistic. But I can take a million photographs and work with a million force fields a day. That's easy. That is easy. So how do you do it? Do you, every single day, do you put those photographs in front of the, the light? Uh, or, or do you just do it once? How does it work? Every day you do it? Every day when I wake up in the morning, I have these photographs, and they will be placed in the instrument. One hour a day, I eradicate pathogens and toxins one hour a day. And I correct cancer signatures and I correct autoimmune disease one hour a day. The second hour a day, I download the energy and I balance the chakras. That's hour number two. I can balance the chakras. And that's all it takes. Two hours a day. That's it. And then for the rest of the day, I have a process that I've developed in which I can take photographs of nutrients. Here's vitamin B6. Follow my thinking. For the remaining 22 hours a day, I have a different instrument, in which I place photographs of people inside an instrument. I download the energy of vitamin B6 into the person, into their course. I was also wondering, what if like, someone has some sort of like demonic possession? Have you ever sort of had to go down that route at all? That's a good point. I, I believe this energy is from God. I believe this is divine energy. And I believe this divine energy can drive out demonic intentions or demonic obsession, or demonic spirit. This is divine energy. And when that's downloaded into a person's soul, mind, and body, I believe that will correct what I would call evil spirits or, or demonic obsession. That's a good point. So that's another benefit. That's a spiritual benefit to drive out what's evil and to only bring in. And to welcome what is good. And is there like age limits at all? Like, you know, I know on your website you say, uh, you know, people over 18, but if you have parental consent, you know, is there youngsters like, you know, two, three, four? I've treated infants with great success. And keep in mind, this is not a biological process. This is not a chemical process. It's information. Information does not harm. So many times I've taken photographs of infants, and I simply send the corrective information to that infant, and the infant responded. I've treated people who are 90 years of age, never incurring a chemical side effect. There's no chemicals. It's non-biological. And are there specific cancers that this works for, and that you said there was some that, that it had worked for, and then others that maybe it hadn't worked for? I'm going to say across the board, it's, it's been shown to work with all types of cancers. Why? Because it's information. You simply have to correct with Scalar the wrong DNA information. So I've worked with people with leukemia, cervical cancer, rectal cancer, skin cancer, breast cancer. I have great success. These people tell me they're in remission. So regardless of your age, the type of cancer, leukemia, regardless of, of how advanced the cancer, as long as you're not on, on the doorstep of death. As long as you're not experienced the wasting syndrome, you've had great success. Can you take a photo of somebody like without them knowing and use that to help them? Like, or, or do, does this have to be like a voluntary thing? Is that part of the, I don't know, energy acceptance? I don't know if that's the right term, but no, that's a good term. We want people to accept this. So we have a 15 day free session on our website, but I leave it up to people to sign up. Over the years, millions of people have signed up. But to be clear, I want people to be educated. I want people to take the steps to sign up for the 15-day free session. 
they don't want to force us upon them. So we're still at the educational phase. What does like 15 days sort of result in? Like, I mean, I'm assuming that then it gives people a, a taster of maybe some benefits or, and, and then you, you like, you want people to sign up after that. How does it work? Within the first 15 days, I'd say people feel better because their sinuses start to clear. I just had a woman report that for the first time in years going on the 15 day free session, her hands are nimble. She, they're no longer inflamed, probably because we've eradicated so much, so many germs, so much bacteria, fungal infection that has prohibited her movement, her dexterity. Some people say that they start dreaming within the first two or three days because their chakras open. Others say that they're happier within the first week. So we let people make that decision. Everybody is unique. That's why I give away 15 days of free sessions. I want people to make that decision. How do you feel? What is the difference, the before and after? And most people tell us that, that there has been an improvement in, in some fashion in their health. Do lots of them sort of carry on? Like they're like, okay, cool. I want to, and okay. So, I mean, you don't have to answer that, but like how, how long do you have to then sign up for and does the process sort of last for it to work like deeply, I would say, in, in your... Everybody's different. Many people will sign up for two or three months and then they'll say, well, that's all I need and they'll go off for a few months. Invariably, a lot of people come back later in the year and they'll sign up for another two or three months. The key is this, the people have to judge. The key is let the people have complete latitude complete freedom to come and go as they please. And that's what we do. We Our paid sessions are 30 days at a time. There's no long-term contract or commitment. That's the key. That's why people like it. They they only use it when they need it. It's just fascinating. So, so do you like ask people then to sort of, okay, maybe write down like how you feel feeling now, you know, and then um, when you finish the, say, 30 days, like write down again how you're feeling. Do you ask for any of that sort of information so that you can, you know, I guess it, 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 you sound like you sort of at the education information gathering phase. Like how do you gather that? We, we are in the information phase. And we always ask people to submit their testimony, good or bad, submit their testimony. We have thousands of testimonies on the website. I think it's prudent for most people if they start off with us, day one, keep a journal. Even if it's only one or two sentences, keep a journal and, and monitor how you feel day after day or, or bi-weekly. It's unique. Now, when was the last time somebody asked you to send their photograph and you're going to improve their soul, mind, and body? So this is a unique protocol. I realize that people have to be educated. That's what we're trying to do through this podcast. And people have to, if you will, catch this and catch on and pass the baton. This will only make its way into mainstream if people believe in it, they feel better, and then they share it with family and friends. And that's what I propose. I want this to be a grassroots effort. And have you had like much pushback from, I don't know, industry or, you know, like a lot of the time there's there's higher powers or so higher powers, so to speak, you know what I mean? Like that don't like guys like yourself that are tinkering with things like this. Have you had any one knock on your door going, Hey, but I, I've had some government interference, but you know, I, I responded to those, to their inquiries. And frankly, they're ignorant as to what I'm doing. You know, there, there are many people out there who think they know what I'm doing. They don't. And, and in response to some government inquiries, I explained what I'm doing, and frankly, it just shut them up. They have the slightest idea. This is a new science. The government does not understand. The government is it. A- Tom, what are you most excited about about the future? And like, w- where do you see this going? And what do you have coming up? I want to be able to work with a billion photographs. Many of those photographs, remember, they can be group photographs. I- I'm working with corporations that send me two, three hundred photographs a month. Corporations. Sometimes there are athletic teams that send their entire athletic team. So I want to be able to work with a billion photographs and prove it to the world. I, I expect to do that in the next two to three years. Within the next three to five years, I want to start illuminating objects at a distance. You mentioned uh, engineering a new type of instrument 
to broadcast energy at a distance. If I'm successful, you'll hear about it in the news. I promise you, you'll see a building light up. I've got a building in mind in Florida that I want to illuminate. If I can illuminate that building, it will be as bright as the sun. And you'll see it. It will be on your morning news someday. So in the future, I have a building in mind in Florida that I'm going to illuminate with this divine energy. That's extremely exciting. And, and just my last question for you, what does uh, being ridiculously human mean to you? I accept my limitations. I accept my good points. I accept my failures. I thank God for every day and I make every day a positive day. I had a great day today. I was very successful at research. I had a very successful, productive day and I wish that upon everybody. Yeah, I don't, I don't spend my day chasing windmills. I had a successful. I love that. I love that you think about like, what does a successful day for me look like? And I don't think enough people actually think about that, you know, especially with these days, people are just sort of stuck in the rat race and going through the motion. And like, if we can just sort of define what a successful day for us looks like, then we can probably feel better about ourselves. Uh, but Tom, I, I just wanted to say like, I'm really excited about what you're doing and I, like I'm rooting for you seriously. Uh, what you're doing seriously to me sounds absolutely groundbreaking, and I and I feel there's a lot of um, hope in in what you're doing. And like a, you know, like this is there is something there for sure. You know what I mean? And uh, I I just wish more people would um, maybe open up their minds. You know to this realm of possibility and and what it is that we are as humans and why we're here and like why we exist and and these sort of things because what you're doing um is really going to sort of help people but really open up people's minds as well you know and, and the more we can open up people's minds the the greater we can sort of expand our consciousness um and sort of find out our true worth and true belonging and being and, and meaning um just the greater we're going to be as a species uh so you know what you're doing is amazing i like i can't wait to see that building light up and hear about it and uh just yeah thanks thanks and, and the world needs people like you you know the world people need the world needs people that are like they're experimenting with with stuff that you know most people have no clue about and, and we need people that are sort of groundbreakers to sort of take us forward so yeah. Amazing, buddy. Thank you so much for your time and everything. Uh, thank you for appreciating this science. Thank you for the, for the high praise. Um, again, let's change the world. We have a great technology right behind me is going to be the way we liberate mankind. Thank you. Thanks, buddy.